Doing science in the Delta is more than just coming up with interesting questions and implementing them. It also requires a lot of on the ground work and pre-season preparation in order to be out here for as long as we are. Our field season is exceptionally long. It's a five month field season. We arrived here in early April and we're here till the beginning of September. We all flew into the town of Chivac, which is about 20 miles north of our camp. So we arrived in Chivac, there's snow on the ground. We have all of our gear, including snow machines stored in Chivac. And we loaded all of our gear up onto sleds and pulled it out to camp, towed by snow machines. We need all of our scientific equipment, our supplies, our camp, our tents, all of our fencing, all of our food, everything we need for a, a long field season. So it's about a 20 mile trip, it takes us about an hour and a half to do that. And we had to make many, many rounds of picking up gear in Chivac and driving it out to camp before we're all ready to get set up. When we get out here, everything is frozen. We have the river right here at our doorstep, maybe like 30 feet away, but when you arrive here at the tail end of winter, it's hard to even know that there's a river here. Everything is just snow and ice. The only thing that really differentiates the river from the land are little pressure ridges of ice where the tide is going up and down and moving the ice and forcing it up into these uplifted wedges. And depending on the tide, it can be totally flat or in a low tide, there are these deep depressions where you have to run the snow machine in and come out again. The reason we're out here in the Tataco River Colony is because this is a really important area for black brant breeding and habitat use. There's been a long history of research specifically on Vic Black Brant out here. Jim Senger and his group at UNR have been studying the Brant for over 30 years, and they've accrued a massive data set spanning multiple generations of geese out here, and they're able to track changes and have a pretty good idea of what's been happening to the population over time. We have several different species of geese that all migrate to this area of the YK Delta in the summer and rear their young here. These geese all have something important in common, which is that the way that they forage on vegetation is by grazing the vegetation. So they're eating very much the way we would think of a cow or any sort of ungulate grazing. They're plucking vegetation from above its roots and they're eating what's available above ground. And most of these geese focus their grazing in specific areas on the landscape. And they have a really large effect on the vegetation in those areas. The big question we're asking out here is, how does an advanced growing season interact with different arrival times of birds to affect the vegetation out here? So far, it seems like if the birds arrive early, they're reducing the amount of biomass, whereas if they arrive later in the season, it gives the plants a lot more time to grow faster, invest more energy into above ground biomass, it changes their carbon and nitrogen ratios, making them less nutritious for the birds and also renders it less desirable for the birds to feed upon. And so the timing is really crucial in order to maintain the amount of grazing land out here in the Delta. There are lots of different ways in which this mismatch of timing could affect the overall environment. In terms of carbon exchange, we may see a little more carbon uptake. Not only is climate change an important force that's gonna be altering future carbon cycles, but we have to look at these interactions with other factors that may be specific to a location. Like here, it's the interaction of advancing growing season and goose herbivory, that together those two are controlling local carbon cycling, and that interaction is really important.